Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP, so let's just dive in. And uh, yeah, ultimately today we are going to be talking about the big move on XRP. What is going to happen next? What can happen? Um, and what might happen? Uh, I think that the main thing around the XRP community, and I definitely speak for myself as well, I think that... You know, we are definitely frustrated with the long-term price action of XRP. I think that by now, a lot of people were anticipating much higher price action. I do remember during 2017 and 2018, um, a lot of people were calling for, you know, crazy prices. Then 2019 and 2020 came, where everyone was expecting $10, uh, $15, and even, you know, higher price action. A lot of people were actually calling for $20 to $30. Um, we've heard it all before. But I think that... This year, um, with the overall situation within crypto, price action definitely is brewing. Um, I think that we could see a scenario where XRP does hit a pretty significant area. Um, I think that XRP definitely was one of the most uh, stifled assets within the space. I think that the SEC lawsuit came at a perfect time, definitely damaged a lot of price action on XRP and hurt a lot of XRP holders. In fact, it did $15 billion worth of damage. So if we do look at that and we do take a look at XRP itself, um, we know that it's been a very long time since you know a new all-time high has been achieved. A lot of people actually question if a new all-time high could even be reached, which I think is ridiculous. I, I definitely think that uh, we will see you know a new all-time high eventually. The question is, you know, when? Um, but we have been focused on the SEC lawsuit for a while. I think that it's a great catalyst. I think that it's a catalyst that could definitely push the price much higher than most people anticipate. Um, we do see that it's been five years without an all-time high. Um, and even if we do look at the price chart today, we'll, well, we'll get to the price chart here in a second. But even if we look here on um, you know coin market cap, we could see that we are in this long sideways trading, uh, waiting for a big break to the upside. But one thing that I do want to mention uh, before we look at the price chart and before we even look at that is the ecosystem around XRP. Um, outside of what Ripple is doing um, with XRP, uh, we have to focus on the XRP ledger. We need to focus on NFTs, utility NFTs, tokenization, things like that. Uh, we are seeing a lot of great updates, especially even from Ripple's side uh, with projects like Crosstower NFT. Um, I think that these are great. I think that the NFT world is one that is continuously expanding. It's a massive world. And I do think that as we do focus on tokenization, I think that real world applications through NFTs is going to continue to grow and continue to expand. I think that the world of Web3 is definitely something that everyone should be focused on, especially if you are much younger. Um, I think that the job offerings and the opportunities here are vast. And yes, I do believe that Going forward on in time, uh, the Web3 world, I think that the A in Web3 is going to be extremely high. Um, if you are, you know, going into development, web development, um, any sort of, you know, code-based job, Web3 is going to be the be where it's at. I mean, I remember even going back a year or two ago, um, you know, the job offerings that were around crypto, you know, to be a developer on some of these projects, the base pay starting was like $150,000 per year, uh, which was incredible compared to traditional world jobs where they were starting you at, you know, 75,000, 85,000. So in, in, in terms of the Web3 world, it's, it's very hard to come by great work and um, individuals that do want to do good work. So as we do look at this area, there's so much to offer. Um, and it's still very early on. So you know, it definitely is an area that everyone, in my opinion, should be focused on, no matter what your age is, because there's still great opportunities outside of like job offerings. I'm just saying, you know, if you are younger, you know, this does have a great, you know, area of opportunity. But as we do focus on XRP and as, as we do focus on the ecosystem, um, this is one that I've been focused on for a while, the XRP ledger, because Outside of what Ripple was doing, um, we love to focus on cross-border payments. We love to focus on what you know RippleNet does have to offer for XRP. Um, there is a lot of things happening around projects that are utilizing XRP in the XRP ledger. Uh, Crypto Airy posted this. 
um, on the 17th, and we do see an evident change in the About Ripple in Strategic Investment Press release to accelerate Web3 and startups. Projects built for the masses where payment doors to retail can be opened and liquidity harnessed. Time to pay attention to projects integrating XRP and the Ledger. And here we have uh, the About section. So Ripple is a crypto solutions company that transforms how the world moves, manages, and tokenizes value. Ripple's business solutions are faster, more transparent, and more cost-effective, solving inefficiencies that have long defined the status quo. And together with partners and the larger development community, uh, developer community, sorry, we identify use cases where crypto technology will inspire new business models and create opportunities for more people. Uh, with every solution, we're realizing a more sustainable global economy and plan increasing access to inclusive and scalable financial systems while leveraging carbon neutral blockchain technology and a green digital asset XRP. This is how we deliver on our mission to build crypto solutions for a world without economic borders. Now, long term, um, I told you guys that I'm very bullish on XRP because, you know, reading this, understanding this and realizing that Ripple is going to continue to work uh, within crypto um, and also really analyze the blockchain world and leverage its power and potential, specifically XRP as well. Um, it gives us an insight that we will see a lot of business, enterprise and institutional grade demand. But also outside of this, and when you look at the XRP ecosystem, there's also a lot of retail demand. Now this, I don't believe this ecosystem uh, graphic was upgraded, um, you know, since I don't even know when. Um, I just know that there's not a lot of the newer projects listed on this, but there's so many other projects tied to the XRP ledger, like Sologenic. Um, there's also a few other ones that I recently mentioned in the in, in short term, but I, I'm completely blanking on it. But there's just so many great opportunities for tokenization, digitization, and so many other great opportunities outside of just payments and finance. Uh, that I do think are going to create a lot of demand for XRP. So when you combine all of that with institutional grade and enterprise grade and business grade adoption, you know this all combined is going to allow for a lot more XRP demand as well as a lot more price demand as well. So XRP's price is going to be in the future substantially higher in my opinion, um, but where is it going to go? Right. Nobody can really tell you a, a specific value. Um, I do think that XRP does have the potential to be worth $100 at some point in time, but it's going to be long, long term. It's not going to be in the next year or two. Um, I'd love to be wrong on that. But as we do look at today's XRP, um, I've been focused on a few things. So I know that this chart looks a little messy. It's OK. Don't worry. I will talk about it and I will address it. But one thing that I do want to mention that it's been over 1,000, almost 900 days since our all-time high breach. Um, it's been about 812 days since the SEC lawsuit was announced. And it's been about 700 days since we did hit that $2 range almost on XRP. Now, I do have a few FIB levels based on um, macro levels uh, on this price chart. One, I do have our... Um, just regular FIB level here on the levels that I'm personally looking at. This is the macro. Um, a few levels of opportunity in the short term. You know, if we do get buying opportunities on XRP, I'm looking at anywhere between like the 22 uh, cent zone to about 23 cents. Here's the 786 over here at about 21 um, and a half cents or so. Anywhere within this range is fine to me. I do think that the 24 cent zone looks very, very uh, good if we do get to see it. Uh, one, we need to break significant support at around 32 cents. Again, candle wicks, we will see candle wicks. They are normal. Uh, we need to start to see a big sell off pressure um, under 32 cents to actually even see the low 20 cent range, but it is a possibility. Um, but I also do have levels that I'm looking at when we do start to break out um, on XRP. And that breakout event will be us actually reclaiming 60 cents. Uh, we've already tried to break out multiple times against the 50 weekly EMA, this orange line here. Um, if we could break above 50 cents, I do think that this thing will start to run massively because the last time that we've actually trailed above the 200 weekly EMA uh, was back when we did break up above it back in January of 2021 when we did go on that major tear to almost $2. We did trail above it here and there back in uh, 2020 as well, but we ended up rejecting off of uh, resistance anyways, which by the way, that resistance zone is actually our support zone, which is 32 cents. Um, but 
yeah, there's a few levels that we need to see before we do start talking about all-time highs, $2 being retested or anything like that. Um, but uh, one thing that I will mention as well is on the reverse FIB levels, where we currently are trading at, uh, the 702 would be $0.29. Cents. Um, and again, $0.29, cents, I'll take that. We've already retested that um, initially on back in June. This is on the macro, by the way. Uh, there's also a few levels here that we need to actually retest in order for us to break out, which, you know, this has us at $0.39, cents, uh, which is right around the 382 over here at $0.39. Cents. This is on the reverse FIB level, by the way. Um, on our levels that we have now and going off of our bottom structure from June, if we did bottom here, again, I'm saying if we did bottom here because anything is possible, um, I'm technically going off of the 1618 at about six and a half dollars. So this would be a short um, level compared to our $10 and our $15 original targets, which yes, I do think that those are still possible. I think that this range up here is uh, possible. This nine dollars and almost like fifty cents to you know fifteen dollars and sixty four cents. This is a possibility. And yes, that thirty two dollar range is what everyone has been focused on for so long, aka you know the one six one eight. Um, but I think that there's a lot of smart investors into XRP. Listen, people that are around the XRP community, you know, a lot of people joke around, a lot of people, you know, call each other clowns and stuff. Um, there's a lot of smart individuals invest into XRP. So if you are sitting around waiting for $10 to be targeted, I can almost tell you right now that there's going to be people selling at $8, $9, $9.50, well before $10 even gets breached. So I think up here we will see a very large amount of sell pressure. I also think that we will see a lot of sell pressure around the all-time high and even this $2 range. So this up here is going to be a huge level of uh, sell pressure at around almost $2 to $3.50 some cents. Um, but do I think a big move is brewing on XRP? And I've made a video on this recently as well. I do think that there's a big move brewing on XRP. I think that we've been in the 700 day, um, you know, downtrend sideways momentum, and this will eventually break. Um, back in 2018, when we did top, uh, going to the bottoming structure of the March of 2020, this was about 798 days. But notice that we did not break out initially until about 938 days. And you could actually argue that it was November of 2020, which would have been 1,050 days. Just to give you guys a quick insight, 1,050 days would take us to February of 2024. I don't believe that we need to wait that long. Um, I actually think that we could see a wave five this year where a lot of altcoins go absolutely crazy. And it all depends on what Bitcoin dominance is going to do next. But um, I do like the price action on XRP so far. I think that, you know, us holding this 32 cent zone is great. We don't need to see lower than 32 cents or even our low back here at around like roughly 28 cents. Um, I like the sideways momentum. Remember what I've always said around consolidation. The longer that we consolidate, the higher the expansion. So, you know, if we are targeting this $9, this $15 zone up here, then we would embrace the longer uh, sideways momentum. Because again, like I said back here, um, it took us a massive time to actually get to some of these levels. Now, obviously, yes, March of 2020 was an unprecedented time. Um, you know, recently we did start to see banks starting to collapse, which I do think is adding a lot of fuel to the fire in terms of, you know, crypto actually going on a major run up this year. Um, but I'm still looking at a few things. Uh, I also go back in time. Now, again, I'm not one of those people that will go, hey, you know, we did this run up back here of 74,000%. So that's what we're going to do over here. We're going to go to this. No. Um, but I like to go back in time to 2013 and 2014. And I actually like to talk a little bit about the time frame back here. Because this is where we, we topped out on uh, back in 2013. Give you guys a quick insight for us to start this breakout it was 1200 days so we're actually seeing a little bit of a decline in the amount of days 
uh, that it takes for breakouts to happen. So I do think that XRP could have a breakout uh, much sooner than most people anticipate. I think that we could see maybe like an 800 day um, expansion, which would take us to about the summertime on XRP, which kind of aligns with the six month time frame that Brad Garthinghouse did mention around the SEC lawsuit, which would explain a little bit around like a narrative and a possible catalyst for the price action. But anything is possible. But um, I, I, I do like to say like this took us, you know, 1200 days and look at the expansion that we did see from this price action in a very short amount of time. This was a 75,000% run up. Now, granted the price action, you know, we went from a half a cent to $3 and some uh, cents. So when we're looking at the price action today, we're sitting at about $38 or uh, 38 cents, sorry. Um, and I don't believe that we're going to go to $32 uh, because this would be roughly an 8,222%. Um, but I do think that we could see price action within the $10 range to the $15 range. Um, but I also like this $6 and 50 cent, uh, zone, which would be about a 1600% run up. And, uh, I think that this is the most probable area of getting hit and targeted, which again, I'm not saying that this is the only level that I'm focused on. I do like the macro ba base levels as well, but I'm just saying that the $6 and 50 cent zone might not be a bad area to start taking profits. I would argue that even taking profits at the all time high of 2017 and 2018, wouldn't be a bad decision or even at the recent high that we mentioned uh, that we hit and that we mentioned back in April of 2021 um, because again de-risking yourself fully getting your profits out is not a bad thing although I know a lot of people will school each other on you know their ex exit plan on XRP and stuff I, I see a lot of people saying like I'm never selling until like a hundred dollars a thousand dollars this and like it's absolutely crazy. Um, I think everyone should have their own plan. Um, I think that everyone should, you know, hold themselves to their own conviction. And, um, you know, if you don't get to sell, if you have to bag hold for another couple of years, then hey, it's on you. But I've always liked to say, you know, at a 2x, we take our initial investment out, de-risk ourselves fully. That way, if it goes to a specific high or it goes anywhere, then hey, we made a ton of money and we already de-risk ourselves. So we got our initial investment out. We could go buy some other asset. We could diversify basically for free and keep our XRP. Um, but again, do I think a significant move is going to happen in the market? Um, I think that the on balance volume definitely looks pretty good here. It's starting to gain a little bit. Prices sideways momentum. I haven't really looked at the RSI in um, a while. So let's actually go. So, sorry. Let's actually go and look real quick at the RSI. I just want to see it. So um, RSI um, looks pretty good here. I also want to look at the regular RSI and actually see that as well. So, yeah, I mean, we're just seeing just sideways. Uh, so this looks like we could be brewing for a big move. Um, it could happen in the next couple of days. It could be happening in the next couple of weeks. We definitely have to pay attention to the consolidation because I love to see consolidation like this. Again, this is stronger price action where it's starting to build a floor. Um, but Again, still watch for those possible scenarios of lower price action. In fact, I had a conversation with somebody on my recent XRP video uh, where they were talking to, to me about a 22 cent XRP. I do think that it's possible. In fact, there's a lot of demand in that range. But do we break the 32 cent zone support zone? It's questionable because we also built out a nice floor there. So I would be concerned if we did break that uh, support. But anything is possible in the short term. I mean, Bitcoin could... All of a sudden, you know, flip bearish for an example. Anything is possible. But with all that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, guys, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on if you guys have more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. If you guys are on this before, this has been Nick. Peace out, guys.